Hi, I'm Jody Vance, and this is Bar Smart. What is Bar Smart, you ask? Well, it's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd, and I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructor is very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, they are shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while, rewind it, make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas, that's what we're all about. You picked a great industry to be involved in. We want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better and then actually go out and do something about it. Hey, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about how to get the job that you want right, in the industry, in the service industry. Um, whether it's a bartending job, whether it's a waitress job, uh, hostess, mainly we'll be focusing on, on bartending and waitresses because that's sort of the, the, the job that most people want. Right? Now, how many people are working right now? Good job. Excellent. Okay. I want you to think about your past, about maybe the first time you went and, and, and looked for a job, or the last time. Um, how many people have, have looked for jobs multiple times? Right? Right. It's something that, it's a skill that we need to develop, and a lot of people don't really have these skills. Right? It's kind of it's like, like shaving. You know? If somebody doesn't teach you, you're probably not going to do it properly. Right? But it's something that people figure, well, you should just know. You're you're of age? Well, not everybody does know. And a lot of mistakes are made. Now, how many people have had experience in hiring people? You know? Okay, quite a few. Excellent. All right, so we've got a really good group here in that sense. Um, now, when you're looking at this industry, uh, I have one sort of philosophy that I, I like to take. That um, First of all, I don't like leaving anything to chance. You know, I want to increase my odds as much as possible. And there's no miracle cures for anything. I'm not saying that you follow the things that we say and you're absolutely going to get a job. No. I'm not saying if you, you, know, if you take our courses or buy our videos, whatever, that you're going to get a job. No. If somebody promises you that, they're lying. Right? But what these things do are they increase your odds because they get you thinking. Right? We're trying to share ideas with you and you're going to find out something that maybe works for you, you know, in your market, in your area. Right? Now the one philosophy that I like to use is, for instance, how much how much would you make, let's say, in a year as a, as a bartender? Just pick a number. Nothing really, you know, huge. But, I mean, we're talking about more than $4, right? There's a substantial amount of money here. It's a job, right? So anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to 30, 40. I mean, who knows how much you're going to make? Every place is different, right? And that's not the point I'm trying to make. What I am trying to make is that, you know, is this is serious, right? This is something that I would like to put some time into. 
Exactly. What kind of lifestyle do I want to leave? Do I want to work in a really good spot? Do I want to work in a really, you know, beginner spot? Right? There's a big difference. Right? Place that's busy, place that's slow. You know, big, big difference. So I sort of look at it like, like buying a lottery ticket. Right? If I get a job at a top spot, you know, and literally when I, when I figured I, when I got the job at the Roxy, you know, wow, I won the lottery because I, I won, I got a spot in the best spot in town. Right? And there's lots of places like that around the world. Right? And you want to aspire to get the best place that you can be. Right? So by winning the lottery, well, I, you know, if I'm going to buy a lottery ticket, I'm just, I'm just taking a chance, right? I'm rolling the dice. Nothing I can do about it. Right? One in 10 million. Right? Well, you know, there's something we can do about this for bartending or into getting a job. Right? I can increase my odds. Right? So my main thing is, is I'm going to I'm going to care enough to think about how to do it better. Right? I'm going to go out of my way. I'm going to be proactive. Right? I'm going to go out of my way and make something happen. Right? What are some ways that you know that you think you can increase your odds at getting the job that you want? Mark. Take some time and spend a couple dollars and make, make a really nice resume. Like make it very presentable. Absolutely. It. Be, that might be the only. You might not even get to give it to him or her in person. They might just, you know, if that's all they get to see of you, I mean, sell yourself. Make it a real good representation of yourself. Exactly. Selling yourself. But that's, do you really have to do that? Totally. <laughs> it doesn't always work. Exactly. Now, what do most people do? All right. Like when they go out and get a job. Yeah. Let's just talk about the average normal person. Door-to-door, you know. door, door, restaurant to restaurant, yeah. bar to bar. resume. the market. market. They fax me resumes. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. All right. And when they drop off, it's what does it look like? Plain white. Well, Same. maybe some colored paper else. or whatever. Yeah. Like newspaper. Right. What do normal, normal people do, though? Right? Yeah, Almost yeah. everybody is going to probably be white paper. Yeah. Oh, they did it on their computer at home. Exactly. Right? It looks cheap, probably. They fax it. I mean, there's no personal connection. Right? They may show up, you know, probably at all the wrong times. Right? Show up, show up when it's busy, like in a restaurant. You know, they show up at lunchtime or dinner time. Right? You know, there's so many mistakes. What are some other mistakes you think people make? Dave. Even who, like, when you drop it off, yeah. like if you drop it off to say the hostess, as opposed to dropping off to a manager or an owner, or, like at least they see your face and they can identify, you know, we had the guy, resume with the person. Yeah, we had a guy come in and do that. He um, he came up and he had a he had a great resume. He walked up to me and he had his head down. And he goes, well, you know, I'm looking for a bartender position here, and he didn't even look in my eyes. First off, I'm a bartender. I'm like. You know, that's great. And nice to meet you. He's like, yes, very nice to meet you. So thank you. And I'm like, would you like to talk to the owner? Okay, I guess so. Walk to the owner. And, and uh, I spent about 20 seconds with the owner yeah. and out the door. Yeah. That resume went like this. Yeah. Down in there. And, yeah. 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 Probably a great guy. I was told actually Especially he's a if you're really good guy. Especially resume off so. to an owner or, I mean, a bartender or a hostess, they're not going to hand it off to the owner. Right. How many times have you Sorry. grabbed a resume, flipped it over, and used the page on the back? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I, I don't know. Have you done that? <laughs> That's a really good point. You should, oh, yeah. you, right. should, you should go into the restaurant or bar you're looking for. And uh, uh, one of the things I always did was I always used to go in prior and ask who the manager oh, was. Do some research. Like, right. Yeah, do some research. Right. Like, Decide where you want to work and, and get that job. Like, right. go and find out, oh, okay, the manager's Chris Dobson. Okay, and, and you know, spend some time. And when you go in, may, exactly. I, may I speak to Chris Dobson? That's a place. great point, and we'll get to that in a second. Right now, let's talk about all the things that people do wrong, right? And all the, so what do normal people do? But you're saying, hey, get back to what Doug said. Okay, we're all laughing about it. Right. Well, you give it to a hostess or a bartender, where does it go? It goes in the garbage. Well, why? Why, if I give it to a bartender... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, I mean, I'm not saying this is a perfect world. Hey, we would love it if the bartender were honest and, and respectable enough to not do that. But you know what? This is life. This is business. This is somebody's livelihood, right? Maybe that person's slacking and they know that they are, right? They look at you. Hey, this is competition. The only you know? other time I would accept a resume given to me by, like, let's say yourself would be exactly that. You just gave me a resume that you think you could work with this person is basically what you're saying to me. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, <clears throat> this person's that good, yeah. You know, and I'll take a second. If I don't get it in my hand the first time from that person, I will never look at a resume yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the only time I would say if a bartender handed it to you. Right. Other than that, it's it, it's crazy. Right. So and that's a special circumstance or yeah. somebody that you trust, right? Their opinion, right? But okay, now if you give me a resume, I'm going to give it to the man. I'm going to give it to you, right? Because I respect that, and I'm going to tell you what I think of them because you're going to ask me. Right, and I'm going to give him my honest opinion. Well, you know what? Nah, no. Right? And, and I'll tell you why. And usually, you know, you have to get to that. Fine. Right? But a lot of people will not do that because there's that competition. 
right? So what are some other mistakes that people make? They uh, try to give way too much information right away. You know, just what you want to do is create a personal relationship with the person and ask them right away, when is a good time for us to get together to talk about work, doing business together? Great. That's a, that's a huge thing. Because most people, they just come in, like, in the wrong times, yeah. right? They're not really sure what person to talk to. They talk to the wrong person. And if they do, they potentially barge ahead, right? And it's un inappropriate, yeah. Yeah. all right? So we'll get to the positive stuff later. But what other negatives? What other Nobody things? Really that, Ian? Um, they don't come back more than once. Exactly. They don't follow up. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, my, my dad always said the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? You know, if you drop one resume off, hope you get a job there or a call back. Then you know what? You probably won't. But if you drop a resume off the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and you keep persistent, try to meet the manager, meet people, you look at that guy and you say, Christ, if he wants work that bad, <laughs> okay, if he is that keen, he's showing that much initiative, what will he do for my, my establishment? Yeah. You know, if he's got he that shows kind that he actually ethic, really cares, right? Don't just yeah. stop at one manager or one Exactly. Manager. That's exactly right. Try to hit them all. Yeah. So the mistake is the fact that they just show up once and expect that that's enough. Yeah. yeah. Is that it enough? Happen. It's not enough, especially in the good places. And don't right? become a big customer. Don't start hanging out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's two, there's two things that we can look at. On the one hand, more prof professional, I think what you're trying to say is that don't go in and get hammered every night. No. Right? Like, don't, be, don't become a slob. And I, I've seen that. I've seen people come in, they apply for a job, they talk to you, and you know, they look fine. And they stay the night, and they just get hammered. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. What are the chances of <laughs> Exactly. Well, you know, you're not giving a very good impression. Now, on the other hand, you know, it is good to go consistently and to show your face and get to know the staff, you know, but be respectful, be presentable. So that's what, like what you guys did, right? You, know, you got crazy, you got fun, but you, you know, you, there was a line there, you didn't cross it, right? You're respectful, you made friends with people, you showed oh, the, real good. exactly, <laughs> right? You showed the people, you know, the staff members and the managers who were going to see this, that you had the same style of personality as what the people are working there. That's what you did. You know, you didn't cross the line. Drink too much. Oh, exactly. That kind of stuff is good. Right. Another mistake that people make too is that they know absolutely nothing about the place and they treat it like a crapshoot the second they totally. walk in. It's exactly. like, uh, hi, yeah, here's my resume. Uh, so, what do you know about the place? I've never seen you before. And they're just like, oh, uh, you know, they have no idea about the concept. No idea. What goes on? How busy it is? I mean, how are you going to know if you're starting out bartending? You're not going to walk into the Roxy. A lot of people make a mistake and walk into the Roxy, drop off the resume, and expect that you know you're going to sit down for ten minutes and talk to this person who has very little experience, yeah. and you don't even know the flow of the room. Exactly. You know what I mean? You Use haven't been it. there on a busy night. You don't know. They have no knowledge because they've done no preparation. Exactly. All right. Which which tells me what as a manager? What tells you what? They come in. They're they don't care. I'm prepared, and they don't care. They don't they're care. In, they're in for the money. Yeah. 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 And granted, there's money to be made, and there's lots of it, and it's wonderful. But that's, again, not what a real bartender is about, or the club, even. Exactly. You know? well, I hope. It starts out by they don't care enough to think about how to do this process better, right? Is by, you know, getting some information about it. Good point. What, other, what are some other mistakes? Um, do not phone in and ask if they're hiring, because no. I'll say no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, damn straight. Are yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys hiring? Nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. A appearance. As well, you yeah. know, dress sharp. Oh yeah, dress yeah. nicely. Yeah. Dress, appropriate. Yeah. Dress, dress appropriately. Dress appropriately yeah. for the yeah. venue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for the venue. Don't come in a freaking suit to work in, like to come to see me at the Roxy. Yeah, I'm casual but nice casual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what this gets back to is doing your preparation, yeah. doing your homework, yeah. right? It's research, 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 research. It's very important because basically, actually, you know something about this is being an actor. You are applying, you are auditioning for a part, right? There's a specific type of person that you're looking for. At the Roxy, exactly. And I have to convince you that I can play that role. Yeah, yeah. Right? Which means I've got to come in dressed properly, I've got to come in you know, speaking properly, I've got to come in acting properly. Right? And every place is different. Right? And you have to mold yourself to each specific situation. Very important. The only thing I was going to say about that in terms of, of how to dress for a potential interview, <clears throat> I've always gone by the adage that I would rather be slightly overdressed than slightly underdressed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I so I, I think that, I mean, you don't want to come in and like tucks and tails, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that, but along the same token, I'd rather have it where I err on the side of caution. Yeah. And have I would agree with I, that. Yeah, yeah. you know, because I've walked into places and applied, and I'm dressed in what I think would might be appropriate attire, for the, and, and maybe it's preparation, as, as, as you say, and that sort of thing. But there's a certain standard of, of, of that you should be able to, that is acceptable. Right. Clean. Yeah. Respect <laughs> clean, right. yeah. clean cut. Yeah. 
et cetera, et cetera. Right. But if the person kind of sizes you up, and a prime example, there's the, again, there's a certain standard that is acceptable across the board. Right. But if you're wrong that day and you dress a bit down, all of a sudden you miss the potential opportunity. And so, yeah. I, again, from my, my own vantage point, I'd rather have it where I err to the dressier side. Exactly. But again, it comes down to research, right? Remember we talked about, again, in the money in the beginning? Like, so you say you're making minimum wage, right? So what is that, just, just your minimum wage, what does your wage end up being in a year? We're talking about multiple thousands of dollars here, right? This is something that I want to spend, you know, more than five minutes writing up my resume. You know, I don't, if I'm going to spend, you know, a couple hours, a day, two days, five days, a week, that's what I'm going to do, right? I want to pick the place that I want to work in, right? And I want to go after and get that, you know? But you ask yourself, think of how much money you potentially will make, you know, in, in a week, a month, a year, two years, however long you think, and what is that worth to you? You know, you're going to win a lottery, basically, because you're winning the job that you want. So pre prepare, you know, maybe phone them. Yeah. Preparation is definitely the biggest thing, uh, making sure you have a pen with you when you come in. Mm -hmm. Huge. 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 So a lot of people don't have a pen. They go, oh, can I have a pen? Oh, another mistake. Huge. Yeah. Not prepared. Uh, a cover letter. Uh, you can't, with the cover letter, it's tended to describe something about yourself. Totally. And right. it's something, if I'm going to go through a files later of uh, who do I want to phone back for me to come in for an interview, yeah. don't have a cover letter. I'm probably not even going to give you a call because I yeah. know nothing about you, your personality. And you haven't done the preparation. They, the they haven't done any sort of time. Yeah. They haven't put any time or effort, guys, no time or effort into, you know, hey, I want this job. I really want, I want this more than the next guy. You want to stand out from the next person. So what are some other mistakes that people make consistently? Go Grant. in with questions. I mean, if you don't have any questions, when a manager asks you, do you have any questions about us? If you don't have any questions, they're just going to laugh at you. Like, yeah. you have to find Huge. out everything about the place. And because the reason that is right is because we as servers, anybody in this industry are service people. We take care of people, which means we have to be creative problem solvers, which means we have to have a personality. A lot of, a lot of places now are doing the big, the big uh, cattle call, you know, where they, you're, you're in line with like, you know, 40 other people. Group interviews. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the new way of, <clears throat> when clubs open, they, they're hiring like sure. that. Sure. So what would be the best way to approach that, that type of thing? I mean, that's we're a good question. We're having a resume, but there's also the big cattle call. Well, first of all, I think the mistake for most people make was that, is that they wait for those sort of things, yeah. right? I want to go out and get something before that happens. But that's a really good question, and remind me a little bit later. What other mistakes do people make? Lying on the resume. Um, I find that. <laughs> <laughs> get back to that one. Yeah. I find that uh, uh, when someone comes in and they automatically they're they're doing a good job by wanting to speak to the manager, but they're trying to bulldoze over. Like I was behind the bar a couple of times, and he were, I need to speak to the manager. I got a resume. I want to drop off a resume or whatever like that. And they don't really click in the fact that if you do possibly get the job. You'll be working with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be nice. That's to right. Make a, make well friends as totally. long yeah. as, as exactly. well as your, yeah. your exactly. introduction. Got to be friendly, right? And you they're not. Look at these people as potential coworkers. Exactly. Yeah, that all goes with being confident as opposed to being cocky. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Be, you got to turn it on before you walk in the door. Yeah. Right. You got to. How, how do you want to be when you're behind the bar? That's how you walk in the door. Hey, you know, my name's Scott. I'd like to speak to your manager. You know, what's your, what's your name? Hi, Russ, I'm Scott, good to meet you. All right, is your manager in tonight? Actually, yeah. or even if he's not in, then he'll be like, I've just met a really cool guy named Scott. I read his resume, it's great. And then he'll go, instead of competition, hey man, I'd like to work with this guy. I like this cool guy. Oh, for like, that guy. Yeah. And then yeah. say another exactly. thing, or write another thing on the resume, which will stand out uh, right. to like a blank page. or like mm -hmm. a white When page. you're in this industry, you're on stage. You're not acting like you do in your living room. It's different. You got to gear up. Right? How far you gear up, that depends on the spot right? and your personality. Right? But you have to gear up. So gear up before you walk in the door so then you talk to that way to everybody. Yeah. Just a point in general. The biggest mistake that I found with interviewing people is, uh, in general, I want that person that I'm interviewing to be interested in my bar and in me. And, and I want that person to not just come in and, and just be purely self-interested in, in what's in it for them. Yeah. I don't want to talk to someone who just wants to sit there and spout their good praises. Yeah, you have to sell yourself. But I'll tell you, the best way to sell yourself is to get me talking about me. Like, that's yeah. just the truth. That's just the truth, okay? Yeah. If you want to sell yourself, if you want me to like you, the, the, the way it is with everybody is that everybody wants to talk about themselves. Yeah. And if I'm the manager of a bar, what I used to go do in, in interviews is I would interview the interviewee. You know, I'd go in there and I'd start asking him about his bar and ask him about himself and, oh, your last yeah. name's Skanoknik, whatever. Where are you from? You know, like, right. honestly, I would do <laughs> less talking than the person that was interviewing me. Yeah. And they liked you. Yeah. And you know why? It's because 
he's able to show that that's the personality that he's going to have in the bar. This is a different industry. You're not applying for an accountant position. Right? If you bought this video because you think you're going to help you get an accountant job, well, this is not going to work. Right? <laughs> yeah. Different right? personality, like right? showing that. Right? Same thing. Any level of job in this industry, you know, hostess, manager, uh, bartender, whatever, right? you want to show that kind of personality. Right? And so you don't, and when, when somebody's interviewing, you don't just answer yes or no. Expand on them. Right? Sheila? I, I've watched people apply at the Roxy, and what I always find is people don't have eye contact. And I would never hire someone who couldn't make eye contact. I mean, if I'm working in a bar and I want them to be able to <coughs> cut someone off, how are you going to totally. cut someone off if you sir, can't look at sir. them or you can't confront anything yeah. or you don't even have enough balls to give? Whoa! Can she say that? Seriously, though, but if you don't have enough balls to, to ask someone where the manager or where the owner is. Yeah. Well done. Exactly, good point. What if it's Jared. If it's don't lie on your resume. Go to the guy manager. I'm oh, sorry, what? Do not lie on your resume. Do not say that you worked, I don't know, I bartended in Japan yeah. for six yeah. months. And you will yeah. get sniffed out and ridiculed yeah. so quick. Yeah. And the other thing is that bar managers are very, very, very busy people. So as much as you'd like to be extremely personable with your resume and extremely, right. you know, like, well presented, keep it specific, short. Yeah. short. Um, I, JP, who manages, uh, where is he now, Legends? Yeah. Yeah. When I was working with him at Fred's, he was, he was part of the hiring process, and he would not look at a resume that was two pages. Yeah. He says, anything that you cannot tell me in one page, yeah. you know, I'll find that out in the interview. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Well, a lot of places. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I disagree. I think it, uh, you See, the two page yeah. thing, as long as it's concise, the for sure. letter, just be right. specific. Right. As long as it's but entertaining. Yeah, but you don't want to hand the guy like right. five pages. Yeah, like we have what some people getting at or Jared. whatever. You know? <laughs> we just have like uh, some people dropping off like essays. You know, and it's right. just like, uh, in 1986, I rode horses, and this is what I did, and, you know? Right. I get back to what Chris said earlier. It was about knowing when to take the time. When would be a good time to come and discuss this, right? Because if you don't ask that, all of a sudden, it's very potential, very high potential that you're going to be pushed in a bad situation. Bad. When you have the time, first of all, respectful, shows you're thinking, you care, right? That's a big thing. And then you might have a little bit more time. Chris, you had a comment on what Jerry said? Um, on the resume... Uh, please don't put on your resume references that you asked me not to call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People, don't call that guy. people really? constantly come in and they say, I say, so I'll call these references. Well, if you call the top one, um, ask for this person because I really had kind of a bad outing. <laughs> Leave it on your resume. Yeah. Like, uh, pretend you never really? worked there. I don't want to see it. I don't yeah. want to know that, you know, tell me or tell me about it. Mm -hmm. But. Don't put a, re a reference on there that you don't want me to call. That's it's well, unbelievable. Never, never you know, but, but this is first, like have written references in your resume and, and a number to call. So yeah. right. Talk but that, that's references. a really good point, though. I mean, you know, these are things that people just they don't seem to think about. I, I don't know why. It's not rocket science, but a lot of people don't know. Nobody's told them. Nobody's well, trained them. They make their resume, and uh, six months later, when they lost that job and they can't yeah. figure out why, they go out with the same resume. Similar. <laughs> they don't do anything different. They don't update it. Nothing. Exactly. So it's getting back to the point of they're not doing the preparation. They're not caring enough to think about how to do a job better. And you know what? That's showing me something. Showing me that that's not the kind of person that I want in my bar. Right? I want a leader. I want a go-getter. I want something that's going to make something happen. Really yeah. quick. Silliest thing when I was hiring people, I would never ever even talk to someone for more than two minutes if they were chewing gum in the interview. Oh. Now, I don't know why. I just, they'd walk into an interview chewing gum and it was game over. They, they lost. Same yeah. thing with the pen. You know? Yeah, same thing with the pen. I think we're talking about little things really can make a difference. I mean, how long does it take to make a first impression? Exactly. Okay, Dale had a comment. As silly as it sounds, brush your teeth, for God's sake. Oh, no. You know, when you get a, a urine, a, if you're in a nightclub or a restaurant and it's a little bit noisy and you want to talk to somebody, you've got to talk you've gotta be right very right. close. Pop a mint. Or if wow. you don't chew that gum, <laughs> swallow it yeah. just beforehand. Yeah, right. But right. have right. fresh oh, breath. Good point. You know, right. Especially that could... if you just killed a cigarette or a coffee or whatever. Yeah. Same with the odor. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that again for us? Dale saying? It's, it's the little <laughs> things. <laughs> when The little things in your preparation that leave a lasting impression. And... Smell stays in your mind a long time. Exactly. You know, and yeah. the guy came in about three weeks ago, and as he was telling me that he was the best bartender Victoria has ever seen, and I said, You haven't met James Starring yet, but. Yeah! yeah. 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 He is looking for it. As he's telling me he's the best uh, bartender in Victoria, who I've never met, he's picking his teeth. Oh. Ah. What do you think of that, Chris? 
You're out of here. Yeah. yeah. So I yep. go, you're go making go. an impression, and it's yeah. gonna stay there. Go back to the trailer for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> James. I read an article once that said um, the perfect candidate will have no scent, and in terms of wearing <laughs> cologne or that kind of thing, yeah. it's a crapshoot. Huh. If I'm yeah, wearing a cologne point. that you don't like. Or you're allergic to. Or you're allergic yeah. to it or whatever. Not for a bad anything, point. For anything like that, right. if it, it, it sounds like I really, like I'm splitting hairs here, but if you wear something that, that someone finds offensive or right. reminds them of your <coughs> boyfriend or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I never thought of that. That's a good point. He said we're trying not to offend anyone. We're trying to just, you know, judge, have them judge us on our own merit, not on some of these little tiny things so that it's just preparation and it's thinking. Yeah. Right? But these kind of things, you're making those mistakes, I'm just thinking that you're not thinking. That, yeah, exactly. And that's not the kind of person that I want behind my bar or, or serving people or hosting people. None of it. I want real leaders, right? So what are some other mistakes that people make? Yeah, yeah. Give me a shave. Sure. I think that all comes down to presentation. Same thing, though. Same thing, Tiger. definitely. Tiger, you know that. Tiger. Exactly. I think people over talk. Like if they do get a chance to see a manager and right. the manager, they, they still sit there or they sit there after and go for a second time or a third time. Yeah. You just look pathetic. Lay it on too thick. Yeah. I, I've, right. seen, I've seen people do that. I've seen yeah. the manager come yeah. up and talk and then true. they wait till he comes back again. The minute they see him, oh, it's like, oh, shut I forgot up. to tell you that. Yeah. Right. So, well, because you know that's going to be the employee that's always telling you what they're doing all the time. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, body language. I'm going to go get this. What do you mean, Jerry, body language? I mean, I mean being open, right? Um, I remember going into a job in sales, and uh, one of the first things that I learned in sales was God gave you two ears and one mouth, and you should use them in that order, right? And you, shouldn't be, you should be open, right? You know, shut up, listen, and then react, right? If somebody comes in and they sit down across from you like this, yeah, I'm looking for a job, blah, 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 this is all about me, they're talking to right. the desk, and they're all closed in, you know? How good are they going to be? Body language is very important. I think it gets right back to Ian saying, get him talk, get your interviewer talk. Exactly. To Listen, yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. Any other negative thing you think people do a lot of? Yeah. Well, as well, when they're James. being interviewed, they don't answer the questions. Like, like it gets back to listening again, but I've, I've, I've interviewed people and I'll ask them a question and the answer they give me has no possible bearing on anything <laughs> I've just said to them. Really? Are you a So you look at them and I'm kind of yeah. going, is English your second language? Like, right. what's, what's the problem? Like, like, like this, if you're asking, you know, fairly direct and very point, pointed questions, they should be fairly easy to process and respond. Right. Because what is the bottom line? You have to be able to communicate. If you're going to hire that person, they have to communicate, you know, with everybody in, in a very stressful situation. You know, loud music, crazy things, all these things going on. Right? So if they can't communicate with you and, you know, a quiet table where they better, when they know they have to communicate with you, well, it just doesn't give me a good impression, does it? Right, Dave, you have I think honesty really works well. Yeah. As, uh, well, it's. I actually had a question. Do you have you ever lied? It was like, well, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been mad at somebody? Well, you know, you, and if you answer no, I've never been mad. At, I love everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and honesty really, really like yeah. break through straight to the point, and people yeah. can tell. Most people can, especially in our industry, can tell people are honest. And, yeah what they're up to and what they're doing. And know? genuine. That's yeah, be point. genuine. Yeah. That's a really good point because especially yeah. uh, in our industry, the, if you're a manager, the first thing you want to do is see how, how easy it is to make someone uncomfortable. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 You know, like, if I can make you totally uncomfortable in, in 10 seconds, you're not going to work here because everybody else is going to try People too. Like drunk, right. yelling. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Evil exactly. managers, evil hires. Scott, I've got a, a kind of a wrap up to this question. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's see what you got. Another, another mistake for I, I find that a lot of people do is they don't go to where they belong. You know, like uh, yeah. they don't do the, the proper research, which we're getting back to the normal thing. Um, right. You have to basically, it's like the ugly duckling scenario, you know, like the swan's in with the ducks and then finds his swan family and live happily ever after. You know, you know basically when you go into a bar or something like that, if it's your atmosphere, if it's where you want to be and where, you know, you're going to be able to communicate with the other employees and work better as an asset rather than just being a ugly duckling. You know? mm. No, good point. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that, that basically there's all sorts of different styles of bars, mm -hmm. right? And, you, you know, why would you look at something that you're just not going to feel comfortable in or fit in, right? Now, you can sort of mold yourself, you know, a little bit here and there, but um, I don't know, like, I probably wouldn't, personally, I probably wouldn't be really super comfortable in, like, a hardcore biker bar. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have nowhere to go with that. Uh, I know. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, nice, nice biker chaps people. <laughs> nice chaps, right. I, to I totally think that um, being an employee at a place and receiving a resume from somebody, right. I can pretty much get a gist of could they, could they be a team member, can they fit in, can right. they, you know, just, just by how they react, how they present themselves to, like, just a... Uh, a punk employee like myself, if they would be a member, you know, if they can fit in. If they're going to fit in, sure. Probably if they've got what it takes to be in this particular style of club. Right. As so again, it comes back to doing role. the research. You know, picking the place that you want. Do you have a comment, Grant? Um, we've been talking a lot about how if somebody comes in for a job and say the bar doesn't want them. I think people should be prepared to go in for an interview and just be able to say, I don't want to work here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After yeah. asking yeah. certain questions yeah, totally. like Huge. Yeah. the DD program, do they have one or something like that? Yeah, liability. Like big liability. 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 You don't want to work there if you're going to be right. liable for their mistakes. Yeah. You know, that's a really someone mentioned having the questions earlier, and actually I remember when I went to my interview for the Roxy, you know, many many moons ago, and they, you know, we had the, you know three of them, the owners were there, and um, at the end, and they said, you know, do you have any questions for us? I mean, we had a good conversation as we were going. I was asking a little question here and there, making comments, but at the end, it's pretty standard for someone to say. Do you have any questions for us? That is at least if they're interested, mm -hmm. right? If they're not, they're not going to have any. They're not going to ask you if you have any questions. But if they're interested, they're going to ask you. I remember I had a sheet of eleven questions. I said, actually, I do. Just one sec. There you go. Um, actually, number one, you know. And there's some questions that I ask. Um, things about I asked, what is the pay? Right. This comes down to, do I want to work there? Right. right. You're asking me if I have any questions for you. That's giving me an indication that you're interested in maybe having me work here. Well, now it's my turn. Yeah. Right. Because. I know I'm a good bartender. I have the confidence that, that I can do a good job. So I want to pick some place that I'm going to be happy at, that I can do well at, you know, that I can. A lot of things are important. I want to be respected. I want to have some leeway. You know, I want to be you know, having some guidance. You know, this is what we want out of you. And then, and then go and do it. There's a lot of things that I'm looking for in, in a bar that's very important. And right away, tables are turned. All of a sudden, you know that that person's going, all right, fair enough, good question. What is the pay? Don't be afraid to ask this. Like this is this is something that you deserve to know. Well, the pay is this. You know, is there a possibility for you know when, when is the possibility for a raise? You know, and and what do I have? <laughs> sure, right. We'll get to that. But I mean, what are you know what are the scales? What are the things that the you know that I can expect? Um, what are some other questions that you really need to ask these people at this at this point? Do you have a daughter? <laughs> oh, oh, oh Russ. Just to wrap this all up, Russ. Wrap this all up. Can you drink on the job? Wrap them up. Wrap them up. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You know, let's let's talk about this. First of all, first of all, drinking on the job behind the bar. Does it happen? Yeah. Reality. Some places do it, right? Is it legal most places? No. No. Is it professional? No. It's not, legal. It's not professional. It's not professional, right? Is it acceptable in certain places? Right? And I mean, I'm not saying that, uh, go back to the beach again, right? Um, I don't know if I mentioned the beach in this one or not. Um, the, in, in Vegas, in Las Vegas. Now, uh, I'm not saying that they drink, I don't know, but they do things really different for their particular bar. Well, you know, maybe there's a spot out there that it's acceptable and it works, you know, to drink, to drink with your establishment, you know, but there's liability involved, you know, there's really liability, you're taking some chances. So there's a lot of different things, right? And you got to choose what works for your establishment and it comes down to the owner. You know, owner and management, what do they think is acceptable? Go to them. I don't think that's a very good question to be asking in your interview, though. Yes. Yeah. Right? This is a promo tabs, can you drink? Not yeah. right. right. See, this is another scary thing, too. A guy who's flipping, flipping a 40 pound, like a 40 pounder with a full of juice, and, and you see him taking shots off to the sides. <laughs> hey. <Yeah. laughs> okay, I'm walking away from your bar now. You scared yeah. me. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what are some other questions? What's that? Well, what are some other questions that you want to ask at the interview at this point? Do you bid for shifts? Sorry? Do you bid for shifts? Do you bid for shifts? Can you explain that, please? Um, I work at the Hard Rock right now, and what, what, what they do is they have, um, they have a sheet up where, where you, uh, the, the, the certain best shifts are available. And a lot of times they, they base who gets the shifts on performance. And so the best shifts that so are on available. Sales. Yeah, on, right. on, on, not, not, not only on sales, they've got about like a, like a 10 point criterion that, 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 you, that you go by. Wow, is that legal? They don't, they, don't, they don't make you pay. 
Money. Oh, no, no, not, oh, not money. No, oh, you said oh. bid. I'm like, no, I'll give you 40 bucks for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought you meant. Do I hear 45? I was just like, no, I was just like, good idea. I really knew way more. If that was the case, yesterday was my last day. But yeah, but it's like, what they do basically is they assess who should work when. On how they did the, like, the, how they're doing the previous week and that right. kind of thing, which I think is totally fair because I have no problem proving my worth. Yeah. yeah. And but the way that you do that is is by how well you work not only with your customers but also with other people. Yeah. Right. And a, a big thing with the Hard Rock because of the size of the bar, if there's one person working alone, it's really hard here in that little printer over there. Sure. And so you've got to keep an eye on that, and then so it's, it's things that got they look at. Right. Kind of so basically, you're asking them, how do you determine who gets what shifts? Yeah. You know, are you, for instance, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm not interested in working in a place that only gives the, the shifts to seniority, oh, yeah. right? I think that that promotes complacency. Yeah. That gives people, you know, there's nothing that they can do. I can come in and be the, you know, work the hardest and have the best attitude and do the best, have the high sales, but because the guy's been here for a year, two years, five years, he's going to, you know, get all the privileges. Well, you know, I understand loyalty and I want to be loyal. I want you guys to be loyal to your employees. Absolutely. Take good care of them. However, you know, they're there to do a job, and if they've stopped doing the job, just because they've been there a long time, you know, they're not doing anybody any favors. Especially if they're working next to somebody, you know, and I think we've all probably had that. Somebody's maybe stayed a little bit too long in the industry, you know, start slacking, and all of a sudden, I'm pulling most of the weight, right? And, you know, bad things happen from that, right? So I want to ask them, how do you determine who gets the shifts? Good question. What else? What other question? Ian? Uh, do I have to serve waitresses? Exactly. Is my position... You know, serving waiters, if so, um, do I, you know, completely serve them or do I always go to the customer? If I have to, if waiters comes up, do I, you know, drop the customer? Do I go over there? What is the procedure? Definitely, good question. What else? Do you have split tips? Do you have to split tips with, your, with the guy beside you? I mean, the guy might be not working that hard and you're working about off and yeah. all of a sudden you have to give him half your money. Definitely, and that's an interesting thing that you want to know. Now, obviously, um, we're going to talk about tips in, in another video, but bottom line is, you know, it happens differently everywhere. And there's no real law on this, right? Every place is different. So I want to know how that is how that has worked out. Definitely, good question. What else, Russ? Standard pricings for the beers, or highballs, or yeah. specials that are standard. Or right. Pricings, just to be familiar with. Them. Sure, I want to know generally. Excellent General. good question. That's it. Dale. Do you, uh, do you have seminars, uh, you know, on upsells or or drop or product knowledge? Yeah. Because it shows again you're interested in the, in in your in your position. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything that you can give me? to train me on, on how you want me to do the job. Yeah. Excellent, good yeah. question. Grant. Does the uh, bar supply with you with uh, promo materials like VIP cards or business cards or something? Excellent yeah. idea. Yeah. Right, we're gonna get into that later. But for now, like, you know, do they give you anything to help you do your job? Right, to promotional material. Excellent point. Ian, had a question? Yeah, I was just gonna actually touch base on what Russ said um, on pricing. Uh, that's a really good question. I was offered a job managing a bar on Granville Street a long time ago that when, uh, when she proposed the, the job to me, I said, uh, you know, what, what's, your, what's your plan? Are you going to have drink specials? She said, yeah, we're going to have uh, like $1.75 highballs every night. I said, I said uh, no thanks. Yeah. No, because I, I just, it's not what I wanted to be, be doing, right? Yeah. Right. Totally. Good point. Hours of operation and uh, what time, you know, do you, does a shift usually start? How long is your average shift? Yep. What are your responsibilities beyond that? Exactly. What's really good point. What are your hours? Yeah. Sorry? Turnover? Turnover in your in staff. Great question. Right? How often are people and that's okay, why do you want to know that? Well, you just want to see that if you if you can settle down there and put in a put in a, like uh, two years is a long time in the bar business to be yep. staying at a bar and, and I always had the plan in my mind to I wanted to get a good job that I'd be like to be there for two years. Yeah. And, That's uh, a great <coughs> point, right? Because you got to know how stable the management and the owners are, right? Exactly. Big point, because you know a lot, of, a lot of people out there, they're not good at running bars, right? You know, they're you know, accountants or they're, or they're lawyers, and they hey, we really need to buy a bar. Great, all, all the power to you. But, you know, I mean, mistakes happen. It's a difficult industry to get into. Stability is good. I mean, if, if we're saying that we're going to put all the time and effort into being an exceptional server, whether it's a waiter, waitress, whatever, Right, I want to have a place that's going to be there for a while, and it's going to be consistent. Ian, yeah, that's a really good point. And um, 
one of the, we were talking about preparation a lot here, and one of the, some of these questions aren't suitable to ask to management. A lot of these you can ask to staff yeah. prior to going in. You can go in the night before your interview. You can do anything, yeah. hang out while it's not busy, um, and just you know ask some ask the staff some questions. Do you like matters. working here? Again, preparation. Well, no, I don't like working here. The management sucks. Blah blah. <laughs> Done. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to go back for interview. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times you get hired if you if you know somebody in that in the club or you yeah. know have a friend in the industry, right? Exactly. So kind of if you want to, you know, maybe buddy, buddy, you know, kind of. Right. A good, really that. good point. We're gonna come to that in a minute, right? So what are some other questions that you want to ask at this point, sir? Is there a dress code? Mm. Sure. You know, for for you to be wearing, yeah. hey, you know, especially probably uh, important for for a woman, right? Yeah. I mean, do you want to wear, you know, the skip you know, is it, you know, what is it, right? Yeah, that's a really good question. Excellent. Russ? Uh, what's your clientele like? What age range? Uh, the vibe, pretty much? Uh, you know what? I think you should know that when you walk into it. Yeah. Right? Great question. I want to know that, but I don't want, if you don't know, if you don't know that, if you're asking me, the manager, you know that? You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you're showing that you didn't prepare. You didn't show up before. How does you think of that? Yeah. You want to know that, but I think it's a bad place to ask it. Sorry to slap you around a little bit. <laughs> All right, James. Uh, with um, the person who's interviewing you, assuming it's a manager, were they hired as a manager? Were they promoted from within? How long have they been there? Yeah. Yeah, is there any internal That's a great question. What, what does that tell you when he's asking you that question? That they're going to be there for the two years, that they're in for the long haul. All right. Is that a good thing that you want to know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. Especially in this industry, it's so transient. Exactly. Everyone comes in like, I, you know, I, I personally, my own thing is I don't hire people that aren't, from here, yeah. Um, I have the, especially the Australians coming through right now, and they walk in. Hey, I'm here for six months. I'm like, <laughs> give me a job. I'll do anything. Well, I don't need anything done. I need something done, and not for six months. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. Yeah. longevity. Yeah. Especially, especially as a bartender, you want somebody that's stable and is going to stay uh, with you for a while because they can create a very large customer base, oh. like Sasha has exactly. at the Roxy. He's created a very large customer right. clientele base that always come to see him. Hopefully at your bar. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very important. Clint. Well, I'll ask if you have a porter, a bar back, somebody that's going to take care of you during the night. Are you going to be in a club that has 600 people and you're running the dishwasher, getting the glasses, <laughs> right. and, and cleaning your tables while you're trying to serve? Exactly. What kind of support? What kind of system do you have in place? Have you thought this yes. through, or are you just, hey, it's great to have a bar, put a bunch of booze in, put some people in, and, and it'll run smoothly? Well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Really good points. Now. What are some things that we can do to increase our odds at getting that job? You know, at every level, exactly. You know, gear up, show you're comfortable and confident. Know the people you need to speak to. Know who they are. Do some research. Find out their what? Their names, at least. Exactly. Yeah. And then use his point. Yeah. Find somebody inside the bar if you know them. Like, hey, I got a buddy that works in. Can you hook me up with them? Can you whatever? Mm -hmm. Get Very important. They can give right. you the inside tip when the manager's going to be there, when they're, right. when they're hiring or when they're right. exactly. While we're on this, actually, I mean, a really good point. How many people have actually gotten a job that, you know, they've advertised in the newspaper? A couple? Have I? I don't think so. How many people have gotten a job of, with somebody that they've known, a referral? You know, get a good look at this, everybody, right? Because you people are going out of your way to make sure, hey, I want a job. Talk to all your friends about it, people who know you, right? If I'm going to come to you with somebody, first of all, you, I mean, you, we have a relationship and you trust what I think. Yeah. So obviously if I'm going to say something, right away that person goes, you know, pretty near the top of the list probably, or at least you're going to consider them, right? All of a sudden, great, you know, when can we set up a time? Good. That's what you want, right? Get to know the people in the bar. Huge thing. People really overlook that. People are oftentimes just think, well, I've, well there's no jobs in the paper. Ugh. No. <laughs> There's no jobs anywhere. You know what? <coughs> if you're good, right, you will find a job somewhere. Yeah. Right? I really, really believe that. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get it the first day. Right? Again, there's no miracle cures. Right. But, you know, if, if someone walks into the bar and is special, you know, and impresses you, you're going to want to make an effort finding a place for that person. Right? You know, it might take longer, but hey, you've jumped up the scale. Go and make something happen. Don't just let it come to you. Ian. Two things. Uh, one of the things when I when I applied to the Roxy, I uh, I got a Roxy logo off a business card and I scanned it and uh, enlarged it and put it on a sticker and got a black envelope for my resume. Nice. Sealed the black envelope, put the Roxy sticker on it, and the sticker also said "Attention, Brian Pierce," who was the manager at that point. Um, that way, that when I 
I, you know, I gave it directly to Brian. Uh, it had a picture as well in it, just a small picture of me, just so you know he had a name to the face. And uh, yeah, that way, that way, you know, I knew where it was going. I knew that it wasn't going to be opened by an employee. And uh, exactly. you know. What about the hundred dollar bill? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it check? Actually, actually, with Brian, he, he likes Coca Cola. Yeah. So you know, actually, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, I'm going to because I can. <laughs> Mark. Um, now, Mark is, and you're going to get here as well. Uh, Mark wants to work at the Roxy, right? Somebody who I know who's, who's worked with the company, who's a great student, and I think very well of. Well, what are some, you came to me and asked me, you know, how can I increase my odds, right? What are, some, what are the things, some of the things that I told you about going in the process? Uh, well, the first thing you told me to do is uh, get your resume going, like, mm -hmm. Like not just, and the first thing you said was, don't put it on white paper, like be creative. And you, you told me some examples that, you know, your, your friend had done and, and stuff. And uh, you said, you know, you know, include some pictures and, you know, make it visual, make it in, you know, make that person, whoever ends up opening that, make them want to read it or at least look through it. Exactly. Uh, and be very complete, you know, you know, in bold letters, I want to be your next bartender. Be very direct at what your objective is. Uh, and the second thing was, uh, you know, do some research on, on where, you know, where you want to work. And for that particular in instance, I had to find out, you know, who the managers were. Turns out I'd met one before, but I didn't meet the other, so I, I focused on the one I didn't know first. And, yeah. and then, um, you know, I, and I didn't even know how to go about, especially at the Roxy, how do you, hi, can I speak to <laughs> Jeff? Like, how do you go about, you know, finding their time? Right. And uh, actually, it was you who gave me a really, you know, interesting and, unique way to get that person's attention, and it worked well. How's that? What did I tell you? Uh, you, t you told me to uh, you know, find out one of his interests, and you were nice enough to help me with that. And it happened to be archery, so I went to, uh, <laughs> I went to uh, Chapters, and I bought like a $30 book on archery. And he said, you know, go, go in there and bribe him for his time. And, you know, when you go to the rocks, you don't look like you're looking for a job. So the, you know, right when I went, knock, knock, knock. What can I get for you? Big bouncer. Uh. <laughs> and he said, I said, I'm, I'm looking for Jeff Reed. And he said, uh, are you looking for a job? I said, no, actually, I'm just dropping off his Christmas present because it's right around Christmas. And I was like, whew, chapter's bag, right? Yeah. 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 So he goes, yo, he's, he's just downstairs going back there. I'm like, just downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just, just do one of these, right? I'm just, oh, okay, so I'm going behind the bar. I'm like, oh, I'm so dead. What am I doing down here? And I saw him right away, and I just like, in one, you know, just with the handshake. And, and he kind of, I sort of met him very briefly before, and I said, hi, my name is Mark. You know, I met you earlier with, uh, with Scott at the, the Vancouver Trade Show. And before he could even get anything out, so I, you know, and I was just like, I was sort of dropping by. I was wondering if I could bribe you for five minutes of your time. Was like, huh? huh? <laughs> I was like, word on the street is that uh, you're kind of an archery fan. And he's like, oh, thanks. Oh, he's reading the book. And he, oh, and he saw my other hand was a resume. He's like, let's go talk. <laughs> so he, he actually took me upstairs. Nice. Yeah, and he actually took me upstairs and he gave me like, you know, I asked for five minutes. He gave me ten. And, uh, you know, he asked me some serious, it was, it was very interview-ish. Right. So very, and I was, I was lucky to get that. So cool. very happy okay. Yeah. Now, to be clear, I mean, he hasn't been hired yet, and who knows, right? Like, there's no miracle cures for anything. And keep in mind that this industry is special. There's, you know, it's okay to be crazy. It's okay to have a personality, right? Now, I wouldn't recommend, you know, some of the things that I told him for, uh, you know, a CEO of, of a large company, right? But he's going out of his way, right, to find out about the person, right? Stand out from the crowd, you know? <coughs> Give somebody a reason to spend five minutes with you, oh, right? The little resume? Thing, little thing, the resume. Like, as soon as I give it to Chris... Uh, and so you gave one to Chris too? Hey, my name's on this. Yeah. First thing you said, it was like the little things, like Fido. Like, it was, honestly, and I don't mean it, I was going to hear about this forever. It was the best resume I've ever seen. Thank you. It was excellent. It was, there was articles and things about stuff you had done and little clips from the paper. It was a showcase. And granted, it was more than the one page and it was more that it, it was a book, you know. And the, for the, really, i got to say for the first time, I'm, I actually went through it and looked at it because it kept my interest and it was what I do for a living and what we do at the, what, at the Roxy, what we do there, tailored to me. Yeah. Not in general, not for everybody. It had, it had my name on it. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I haven't got rat nothing from you yet. Where's my gift? Exactly, but some great comments, you know, and make sure you use some sort of colored paper, you know, and, and put a picture in the way, what I mean by this, have something, you know, of a picture of you bartending, of you dealing with customers. I just want Ryan to come in to the bar and I, I just, Good. just to watch me work, he's taking pictures, 
And I was pouring a shooter into some girl's mouth on top of the bar. It was the sperm in the mouth. And he just got this wicked, <laughs> wicked shot of it. Wow. Wow. That, that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a joke. Yeah, that's not a joke. Good for <laughs> My point is for the pitcher, though, right? is you are, you're auditioning for a part, for a role. And I don't want the manager to have to make a leap of faith to imagine you in that role. I want it right there. You know, oh, look at that. Look at the people around there. He's having fun. You know, smiling. You know, good-looking kid. You know, yeah, all right. I'm going to give him an opportunity. And all of a sudden, if, you know, if you've got 100 resumes in front of you, first of all, you're probably going to pick the color one. Right? It's the one that stands out. Hey, he's got pictures. I, obviously, I obviously already identify with you. You know, I know who you are, so I'll recognize you the next time you come in. But be careful, please, and don't make it the chotch head shot. Do you know what I mean? Where, like, oh, make yeah. it appropriate. Like, make yeah. it just a shot. Hey, this is me. Whatever. Yeah. Not the... Ah. You know, you've gone and done the headshots. Exactly. You may have them from acting, but they're good for acting. I, think, totally the best, I think the best shots are, are action shots of you working mm -hmm. yourself yeah. with the reactions of your customers around you. Because that shows a heck of a lot more. Put in a photocopied or a laser copied thing with the thing, with something written on the side that a customer sent you. Because we've all probably had it where a customer sent us, we had such a great time, thank you, our evening was terrific. Yeah. That right there says ten times. Yeah more than you could ever say in an interview. Yeah. So go out of your way to stand out from the crowd. Think about something. Go a little bit different. Be a little bit crazy. That's all right. You know, make something happen. All right. Any more questions, comments, observations? Chris. Uh, right, uh, definitely give him a card the next day. Uh, tell him, uh, give him uh, just a, like four points about what you got out of it and how maybe you can, you can work together to benefit, benefit each other. Definitely make another connection the next day or within 48 hours. What about a thank you card? Thank you for your time. Uh, how, how many people are going to do that? You know, not many. I th hey, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You know, I, I would love to be your next bartender or your next server. Yeah, that's a that's a great example. That's a, that's a great comment, Sheila. Sheila. When I was listening to people ask the questions they would ask after to the employers, I was getting a little boggled, and it made me think, remember that when you start to ask the questions, don't change your personality. If you've done well, when you get to ask the questions, if you start only asking about money, money, yeah. money, money, you're blowing your interview, because right. now they're going to see the real you when you start to answer questions. So I think just to think and put them in a good order. I have a couple points that I want to make before we wrap up. Um, when you go out there, Make a list. Look at the area that you would be comfortable working in. You know, maybe you can't get to this area. I want to work in sort of like the downtown core. That's my goal. Okay, I'm going to go and make a list of all the places that there are. Right? I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to somebody there. Hey, can you tell me about your place? Right? You don't have to tell them who you are. You know, call the rocks. Hey, what's, you know, what's, what's, what's Roxy all about? Can you tell me a little bit about it? Get some information. Make some notes. Right? Spend the day doing this. You know, make some notes. Um, Pick the places that you think that you'll feel more comfortable. Right? Hey, and, and when you're asking questions, ask, you know, what kind of age group are, you know, are, are they in? What kind of clientele do you have? Right? Next day, maybe make a tour of some of these places. You know, spend a couple days. You know, go in, check out the room. Do you like it? Do you feel comfortable there? Right? Do that. It's a really good icebreaker when you actually get to talk to someone when you've done research, too. Like, I've, I, when I was talking to Jeff, it was kind of a fluke when the first thing I ended up going there on a Wednesday. And right, it was just as I was getting the car, I was like, come to the Roxy, Canadian content night at the Wednesday night at the Roxy or whatever. And I was, the first thing I said was, how's the Canadian content? Because they're advertising, it's, it's kind of new. And he talked about that for like a good 30 seconds before. And I was like, Phew. Right. It was like, Look at the cool. advertising. Yeah, it looked like, you know, and I, you know, as interested as I was, it yeah. just added to that. So. Look through the paper. Like, totally. you know, Vancouver has a Georgia Strait. It's an entertainment. What's going on in the city? Every city mostly has something like this. You know, keep an eye on that. What kind of things do they do? Right, you'll do the more, research. You'll get more out of those magazines than any paper for a job. Exactly. Because that's where all the entertainment, at least here, the venues. Exactly. And even in, in every place I've been, the small magazine, the locals magazine, does the best job of what's going on in the yep. city. No yep. question. You know, make a list of at least 10 places, like 10, 15 places, you know, because you never know. It's difficult to get, you know, the good jobs, right? And if you want them, go get them. Be persistent. You know, show up. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, show up every day, it depends on the, on the place, right? I mean, you don't want to become a pest. On the other hand, you want to show them that you're serious. You know, I would say, you know, show up every, you know, every week, maybe, depending on what they're saying. And you've got to make the judgment on this, right? This is, this is so gray area. Even just yeah. come in for the drink and just say hi. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm still looking. You know, 
That's great. Good to see you. And, and don't always mention the job. No. Right? You don't want to be pushing them. But hey, you know what? Let them know you're there. So I got to, uh, That's all it is. Sorry about it. W. Dale, I mean, uh, you keep saying this, the persistence or whatever. That was great. I sat, down, wheel. I sat down at uh, Steve T's bar like, uh, and I wanted to work there really, really badly. Came in every second or third day and had a cup of coffee and had about four cups of coffee. Sat there, talked to each bartender. I got to meet the owners, the, the other managers there. It's great. And then I got to find out what they were doing there. And good, good. That's where I wanted to be. That was my plateau. I wanted to be in that bar, and it took me somewhere. It took me into this yeah. company here. But you had a goal, and you went after it, and you made it happen, yeah. right? You didn't just wait for it to come to you, because they won't always do that, yeah, that right? You might get lucky, great, but can't we'll wait make for your ship happen. to come in. You, like a lot of the time, you're gonna have to swim out and meet it halfway. Sometimes yeah. more than that. Exactly. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I wanted to, when I decided I wanted to work at the Roxy, it took me two and a half years to get in. And I actually had, um, I got called, uh, I got called and asked to work at another venue owned by the same club. Um, first of all, they said, uh, you know, we're opening up a new little restaurant, and uh, it's kind of a funky design, and uh, we'd like to know if you'd like to come manage the bar. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And I worked there for about a year, and then eventually made my way over to the Roxy. But it was, it was, it was a process. It was like a goal. And, and go and do it, right? Excellent. That's exactly how I did. I went every day, every day, and then <laughs> <laughs> every day. Every day. Chris is like, Look at Chris, he's like, oh, no. You can just come in, you know, every couple of days. Every couple of days. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, you know what, you can just come in once a week. Every week. <laughs> but at the same so time, we, we... I remember you told me that. We didn't have a position. I, I got him to meet with the owners. I got him to meet because That's it was right. a dynamic individual at the time. Um, <laughs> excellent, excellent guy. Just and to wrap this all up. We, we, we ended up, and this sort of, I guess, clinched it. I said, look, I don't have anything, but... We do have a spot at our hotel. It's not what you're looking for, but while it's with the company and when we can bring you over, we will. So he looked at me and kind of went, I'll take it. He didn't even know what it was really. And uh, started working at the hotel kind of like as a... Uh, uh, I was sweeping the carpet out the front door. Yeah, and then uh, opening the door. <laughs> and we just suddenly made room for him. You know, and that's the way you do it. It's, it's a, you, you, create, you create a value for yourself, <laughs> and I can't find anywhere else. Well, there's, I'm not stupid. I'm a right. businessman. You're around. <laughs> we, 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 have a, we have a guy at Sugar. Uh, we have a washroom <laughs> attendants on the weekends, which are quite a nice little touch. We had a, a guy come to us and wanted to be a bartender. He, that was the, you know, there were no bartending positions open, no bar porter positions open, no swampers positions open, but there was a washroom attendant position open. He said, well, I'll start there. He said, I want to get behind the bar. The point being, he was so keen and so willing, he would have started anywhere. And he and made the most of that job. Yeah, and he made the most. Well, yeah. damn straight he is. Yeah, yeah and, and I see eventually if he has a chance to progress and move up. then Excellent. Yeah. Good story. Yeah. I got a couple more points, and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, one, when you're doing your resume, one thing I recommend is you know, getting a pager and saying, I will cover shifts on short notice. You know, how much does it cost to get a pager? I mean, a couple bucks a month, nothing, no big deal. Really isn't. But be accessible. You know, yeah. if you're not around to get that call, you get one opportunity. We'll arrive on short and notice. And it's gone. We'll arrive, we'll cover your shifts on short notice. Yeah. Really recommend that. Something hardly anybody does. You know, I want you to, I want you to be found. Right? Yeah, very important and to be available, you know, at all times and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Somebody's Absolutely. sick, I'll fill in here. I don't care when I work. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. On, on your message, on your pager, don't just say hi, I'll get back to you whenever. Say, you know, leave it a professional sounding message. Say, you know, yeah. leave your number and I will call you right back. You know, I check, I check messages every half hour, whatever. If you're out there looking for a job, consider the possibility that somebody might call you, right? And I don't want them to wait. I don't want to give them an extra half hour or an hour or two hours or a day or whatever to think about maybe calling somebody else, right? I don't want to leave anything to chance, right? Any other questions, comments, observations? And on that, last night was a typical example. We have uh, uh, a few doormen on staff, and we needed to get a guy in a hurry. And I knew the guy that I could reach like that exactly. was a guy I was going to call. He was there in 30 minutes. Cool. You know, nice. he's, Excellent. Because he's easily accessible. Right. Yeah. You at the club I work at now, we have people who still, to this day, uh, come just in case there's work. They don't work there. 
there's a there's a guy named Eric, and he, he's, he's poured like four or five times. But he'll come every day, sometimes with his girlfriend and his friends, just in case we need him to work. We've got a couple guys to do the same thing at the door. They'll come, they'll hang out, they'll sit at the bar, drink coffee, and as soon as it's like, you know, you're not needed, then they'll start drinking or they'll, they'll leave. Right. But every once in a while, we're like, hey, man, get back here now. Help, De help. Dedication. Yeah. Totally. And you know what? Some, yeah. people, some people are going to listen to this and are going to think, oh, like I'm going to do that. Well, you know what? The people who get the jobs are going to be dedicated. They're going to go out of the way and make something happen. Yeah. Plain and simple. All right. Last question. Last one. Last one? Last one. Well, wrap, it up, wrap, it up, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap up. Wrap up corner with Russ Ty. Rolling. No, uh, I think the whole big thing for me. <laughs> settle down. Settle down. Please. Is uh, caring. You know, you really have to care about getting a job. You have to care about where you want to work. You have to care about how you approach it. And you have to care about being persistent and getting the job. It's all, and even when you do get the job, you have to care about the establishment to do those little extra things for even like folding the flaps of the beer bottle, empty, empty bins, so that when they put the beer bottles in, they don't have to mess around or anything like that. People little are, things. Little things. Caring is actually is, is a really, uh, for me, a necessary part of the whole process of getting a job and when you're at the job. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks very much for coming today. Appreciate it. Well, Chris Dobson, welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, first question, first thing, uh, what made you want to start up in the service industry? My honest answer is somebody made me angry. Um, I was working one day, I was an actor, I was in acting school, and I was working as a as a waiter trying to just pay my way through school and uh, I had a lawyer sitting in my section and I was serving him and I'd given him great service. He says, you know, you're a really good waiter, but what do you really want to do with your life? And I looked at him and I said, well, I just want to have fun and I want to be happy. He goes, well, what, you know, you're never going to make any money in this industry. And I got so angry right then and there when he told me basically get a real job. I vowed to make this industry my industry because I love it. I love the people. And I want to eventually hope to meet that guy one day and say, what are you doing with your life now? I'm having a great time. Be strong. <laughs> um, the service industry has a lot of different avenues and a lot of different areas. Uh, basically, patience and being, being able to cope with a lot of different situations, uh, strong-minded, and uh, being able to be social with people. If you're not a very sociable person, this might not be the area you want to be in because it's all about having fun. It's all about making people have fun and feel comfortable and relaxed. So I, I would say my main point would be um, to be very sociable. You have to be a very outgoing, extroverted person. The, the advice that I would give somebody starting out, and even if they're just starting out in the service industry, is to uh, feel the love, give the love, um, feel passionate about what you're doing. You know, like uh, don't just pop a beer bottle and slide it over to the customer. You know, like you wanna you wanna kick it up a notch, be an entertainer, uh, enjoy yourself while you do it. You know what I mean? It's it, that's what it's all about is entertainment. Bam! Clickety clack, black blow, kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Kick it up a notch. I love this guy. So I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. If you were to say someone in this industry, no matter what you do, don't do, what would that be? Don't burn the place you work at down, because that's bad. Not good at all. That's very bad. Um, <laughs> it puts you out of work, yeah. and that's a bad thing. Absolutely. Uh, dealing with people, I like. I like interacting with people. I don't want to sit behind a desk my whole life. Um, people make my job for me. I, I like the fact that it changes every day. You never know what you're going to get by dealing with people and working in the industry. So uh, yeah, I like change. What made you want to be in the service industry? The excitement, the fun. It's not really a job. It's you're getting paid to go out and party and have fun and make people have fun. Um, do some research, you know? Um, I, th I think a lot of people, especially the people that, that you know, that I was hanging around with, that were just kind of coming into the inter like the service industry at the same time as me. They, you know, they just they wanted something where they can earn a little bit extra money, like the tip, you know, part of things. And it's so much bigger than that, you know. Like um, 
like I was just saying before, like the, the money kind of takes care of itself. But you know, if you can find your niche in the industry, and you know, like a lot of us here have, uh, it's just so much. There's so much more payback in it. And I mean, just go and do a little bit of research. You know, there are seminars, there are videos, there are great places just to go and check out. Um, you know, go travel whenever you go traveling. Go check out some of the bigger, you know, the the crazier night spots that get big ratings, and just see whatever you know, anything you pick up, and uh, yeah, just that. Well, I would say if you don't like dealing with people, don't apply. You need not apply. Um, this is a people-oriented business. If you don't like servicing people, then obviously there's no reason for you to be in this business. Uh, secondly, I would say um, there are a lot of temptations in this business. Uh, in regards to you know being behind a bar, there are a lot of temptations out there, and I think I've seen a lot of great people in the business that have unfortunately gone down uh, the wrong path, as you might say, as is any way in life. But uh, there are definitely a lot of temptations on there. I think it's important for someone to get in this business to understand that and realize it, and also realize that if they do the best job that they can, there's an opportunity to make either a lot of money or making a career out of, of the service industry. And if they keep their head up um, and, and avoid a lot of those temptations a lot of times, they can make a lot of money and have a heck of a lot of fun. Like what? Like what kind of fun? What kind or, of temptation? Well, I mean, sex, drugs, and rock and roll is synonymous with, uh, with bar industry, perhaps, and something, things like that. There's other temptations, and uh, again, as there are in, in life in general, there's always going to be those temptations, but sometimes they're, they're, um, there's a peer pressure on you perhaps getting into the industry with people, veterans of the, of the business and again be your own person and be strong who you are and do the best job you can and there's plenty of opportunity in this business. I mean it's not just about bartending, it's the service industry, tourism, etc. It goes on and on, it never stops and you can take it and move forward to other areas of your life if you, if you want to. Well a uh, classic rookie story that I was reminded of a couple weeks ago was uh, um, when rookies go into bars and try to get a job and they don't talk to the staff is a classic mistake yeah, as far as uh, if the proven test of a rookie is, a, is someone that isn't able to have a good relationship with uh, the people that they're, when they, when they approach the restaurant or bar that they go into and they're just looking for the manager and they're stuffy. It's not, it's not like traditional business where you have to get, where you influence only the, the person that's hiring. You need to influence everybody. What opportunities have arisen for, your, for yourself from this style of bartending and your attitude that you have about taking care of people? Um, just the opportunity to work in the best places, to provide myself with the best opportunities. Um, this style of bartending is something that you have to work for, but it pays off so, so well in the long run just because you can work at certain places that will provide you to a certain level of income and then you can get sort of trapped. and you have to grow and by doing that you open up the spectrum of places that you can work in and so being able to work in the top place means top money and oddly enough when you get to the top places the best personalities are there too you find the most amazing people who are working there because they all strive for the excellence and trying to be better and so you end up the work the harder you train at it the easier it gets once you're there because it's just so easy having all these great people around you because it just makes your job easy which is what I prayed on because I enjoy not working and you know sloughing off on other people like well, yourself. You've always told me that you know people ask you, no. you know, how long you've worked how long you've worked there and you say well you know I don't work here I just play here until they tell me I gotta Ex go home. Exactly I honestly never had a, a, a shift where I thought oh darn I gotta go to work and it's always oh well I may have to go work a little earlier than I wanted but I still want to go to work because it's gonna be fun and it's you know that lasted for years in the same place and that's got to show that, I mean, there's something to it. It's an enjoyable way to go about life, whereas lots of people will get bored doing the same thing over and over and over. So it it's just keeps things interesting for yourself and those around you. Well, I don't think I would be exceptional or good at what I do if I wasn't having fun. I think this, this industry is, is, if you're having fun, I think you're good at what you do. If you're not having fun, I don't think you can be portrayed as, no matter how talented you were at flipping or knowing the kind of drinks or knowing the etiquette part of how to treat a customer. I think that if you're not having fun that you're, you're not exceptional. So I think what I think separates me is that I intend and achieve having fun every night or else I quit. Work hard. Strive to be better. Um, set some goals. Weekly, daily. 
Even hourly sometimes, it comes down to hourly. Don't get frustrated. Bad things are gonna happen. Great things are gonna happen. And the payoff is, is so rewarding. And to become a part of the hospitality industry, um, it's endless. I've sat in offices, I've worked in, what I worked for Clinique selling products. Like, it was just stuff I would never wanna do. It all comes down to enjoyment of life, your lifestyle. My life is phenomenal. I love my life, I have a great time, and I work in an industry where all I do is make people have fun. How better could that be? All right, just a little something for them. If you're wondering what you can do to maybe kick up the notch or, you know, bring the love down, you know, just a little, it's in the knees and a little, you know, you, you know, you get it going, baby. You get it down, you get it down in the knees area and you work it on up and you get it all happening. You know, hey, ho, it is, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That pretty much wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program, you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. Just gives a little
little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out! Come